is it possible to improve on perfection? Well, Xpeng might have done just that. Today, I am very happy because I get to drive one of my favorite EVs, the Xpeng or the Xpeng G6, but not just any G6. This is the new updated 2025 Xpeng G6. And I think it's safe to say it just got a whole lot better. Welcome to EV.com. That's right, I can admit it, the G6 has been one of my favorite EVs to come out of China. For me, it's very hard to beat. You've got practicality, you've got range, you've got super fast charging speeds, and you've got lots of room inside. It really does offer a lot of car for your money. And if you wanna see our review of the OG G6, that is the one that's currently selling in global markets, click the link above. That is a great car and should definitely be considered if you are in the market for an EV. But today we're going to be taking a look at this, the 2025 version of the G6 to see what they have improved, increased, updated and refreshed. And with 81 improvements and 34% of components being replaced, let's see if they have made a good car even better. All right, let's start with the look and let me give you a few seconds to see if you can see the difference between this version of the G6 and the previous version. Start the clock. Time's up. So how many differences did you find? So let's start first at the face. So as we can see here, we now have a almost two meter long length uh, daytime running light light bar across this, which more closely aligns with the brand's newer design language. And because of this, the logo that was previously in the middle has been moved up onto the hood. Let's have a little side by side. Let us know which you think is better. And is this actually an improvement in terms of looks? And while I'm here at the front, I have some bad news for you guys, which is that the new version of the G6 doesn't have a frunk either. That's right. Despite this being a rear wheel drive model, we still do not have any storage space here at the front. Let's hope that the trunk is big enough. So moving to the side and no major changes here. We actually have some new wheels. So these are kind of petal style wheels, which I think look very nice, but I'm not really sure what petals have got to do with the brand. Does that matter? I don't know. The other big change is on the wing mirror here, which now has a blue light, which will come on when the brand is in XNGP. So that's the driver assist mode. And finally, let's talk about the rear. So can you see the difference here? Well, the eagle eyed among you will notice that now it actually has a little ducktail spoiler at the back here, which I actually think is a noticeable improvement. The previous version of the G6 was kind of very rounded, a bit blobby from the back. And now this kind of breaks up and gives it a little bit more of an aggressive edge. We also have a new bumper at the bottom here. Otherwise, this version has exactly the same dimensions as the previous G6. So one more thing about this G6 is that just like the new version of the G9, which you can see if you click the link above, this also is available in a dark night trim. But what do you think about the look of the new G6? And do you think it is a noticeable improvement on the previous version? Make sure you leave your comments below. So exactly how is the new G6 to drive? Well, more or less exactly the same as the old G6. It's currently only available in a single motor rear wheel drive version, which I think is the best way to enjoy the car. And this gives 218 kilowatts of power, 450 newton meters of torque for a 0 to 100 time of 6.4 seconds, which is ample. Some Chinese EV brands tend to overpower their EVs. Xpeng is not one of these. They choose efficiency over power, which I think is better for most people in the long term. I mean, if we look at the Mona, which we reviewed recently, this is incredibly efficient, getting up to 11 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. This one right here, it is claimed can do 12.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is pretty good. 
Here's me to tell you very quickly of the efficiency I have been getting over the last couple of days. So another quick update, which is after some mixed kind of highway and city driving. So in the last 100 kilometers, it's given me an efficiency of 13.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is still pretty good. It's not the 12.5 they said. So have a look and let us know if you think this is competitive or not. In terms of the battery types, Xpeng are a little bit secretive about this, but we can assume that it was going to be a smaller kind of around 60 kilowatt hour LFP battery for the standard and max versions and a larger kind of around 80 kilowatt hours for their long range version. Very similar to the previous version of the G6. So one new thing about this G6 is a battery upgrade. So it's still on 800 volt architecture, which is great, but instead of 3C charging, it's actually 5C charging. So this means faster charging times. For example, 10 to 80% in just 12 minutes. Add 450 kilometers of range in just 10 minutes. And this 5C also means better charging speeds in extreme cold weathers as well. But was the original 3C, you know, 10 to 80% in 20 minutes enough? I don't know. What do you think? So in the interior of the new G6 and things look kind of familiar, we have a kind of clean and clinical look, which is very typical of the brand. At least I like it. The first big change to catch your eye is probably this central infotainment system. Now 15.6 inches, looks great, super clear, small bezels, great for watching your movies on while you're charging. Although with these charging speeds, you probably only have time for one episode of your favorite TV show. Over here, we have a new screen for the driver's cluster, 10.25 inches. I do not like this as much as the previous one, which was kind of thoughtfully designed and sunken into the dashboard. As is typical of the brand, we have no heads up display. So the center unit has been redesigned with some more soft touch materials, although I'm not really sure how soft these are. We have some more materials such as wood grain. We have some kind of suede headline up here, and we also have some ambient lighting. Oh, and I should mention that this version starts at 12% cheaper in the China market. And you're thinking, wow, you get more for less. Well, I don't know if that's the case. I think we have this wood grain, this suede, kind of typically premium materials, but here it kind of gives the effect of mimicry in that it's kind of trying to be premium, but I don't really think it is. And I actually, I'm gonna say something very controversial, which is that I actually prefer the design in the old version of the G6. I felt it was very nice, I felt it was very thoughtful, and I actually felt that the quality was better than in here. But there are some things in here which you cannot deny are obvious improvements. So for example, a nine inch digital rear view mirror. The rear view in this car is absolutely terrible. And the previous version of a G6 just had your standard rear view mirror, which you couldn't really use for anything. But here, now we have a very clear view of what is going on behind. Although I'm sure I'm gonna get some people in the comments complaining that they are far-sighted and they can't see this without their glasses, which is a fair complaint, but what you're gonna do. So one more thing, except in the basic version, these front seats have been upgraded to have heating, ventilation, and now massaging, but not just any massage, a shiatsu massage, which is a kind of pressure point massage, which can hopefully help you to alleviate some stress on your commute home from work. And on the outside, we still didn't have a frunk. Well, in here, we still don't have a glove box, but is this a deal breaker? Make sure you let us know in the comments. And if you haven't already, be sure to give us a subscribe for more EV content. So quick look at the back of the G6 and more or less par for the course. We have two USB type C ports in the middle here. I mean, my seat is in my driver's position, leg room, almost touching. I am 197 centimeters though. So most people of average height would not have a problem. And here we have loads of leg room as well. So I could see myself sitting in here for medium to kind of longer journeys. These seats at the back are also adjustable. We can adjust the angle slightly. This is manual, so we can go from here to here. So we can get a little bit more comfort on some of those longer rides. One more thing is that this new version now has double insulated glass so keep some more of the exterior noise out. So no frunk, but does the trunk make up for it? So we have a standard size of 647 liters, which can be expanded to 1,752 liters. 
and these seats go more or less completely flat. And we actually do have fittings for a parcel shelf here to make sure your stuff stays safe. So I don't think Xpeng offer the most dynamic driving experience, and that's because their brand doesn't really want you to drive at all because they have incredible driver assist features as standard. That's right, they prefer the car drove for you. And that's no LiDAR, I repeat, no LiDAR, vision-based only, similar to Tesla. So the system is very competent and it can take you from start to finish in a lot of cases. My one gripe with Xpeng system is that it tends to be a little bit aggressive, but I feel like that's more of a product of where it has been developed. So what do I mean when I say aggressive? Well, whenever you turn this on, it sets your speed limit at 10% above the speed limit for the road, which I don't know who thought of that. I'm not sure about the legalities involved in this, but for me, that doesn't really seem like a good thing to do at all. I'm sure you can adjust this in the settings, but every time I've driven an Xpeng, that has been the default, which for me, doesn't make sense. A lot of the time people use these self-driving driver assist functions because they want to chill out because they want to relax. They don't want to be going faster than the speed limit and the car be driving itself. That is going to give you an anxiety attack in about five seconds. And the other thing I noticed is that whatever you set the speed limit at, the car will instantly try to get to it as quickly as possible. Even if I can see there is a car ahead of me driving slower. So it will accelerate very quickly and because it's got so fast, it'll actually have to brake and slow down again to match speed with the car in front. I feel like this is a little bit uh, wasteful and inefficient. And for Xpeng overseas, I understand it's more kind of like L2 features at the moment. If you have some experience with Xpeng's driver assist features in overseas market, please let us know in the comments below. So there it is, the update to the very popular Xpeng G6. Do we have more tech, more comfort, and more luxury? And will these changes make this popular car even more popular? So 81 improvements, 12% cheaper price. I don't know how these brands manage to do this, but what do you think? Do you think the changes to the G6 are noteworthy? And would you consider one? Make sure you leave your comments below. Be sure to give us a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching.